hi everyone welcome back to my channel so today we're going to be doing something different we are going to have a look at cvs because i know that summer is coming and you know we're all trying to look for something new you know summer is the time that sometimes we might be looking for a summer job a new role so i thought that this would be very very good for you guys to learn a few tips and tricks in regards to how to write your cv so stay tuned if there's something that you want to know, something that you want to learn, or some way that you want to update your CV. Okay, so the first thing on your CV, make sure that you've got a heading. So your heading will basically be your name. So that could be your full name. This is very important because if someone's looking at your CV, they want to know what you're called. At least if you're going to introduce yourself, if someone asks, oh, hi, um, I am so, 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 what are you going to respond? You're going to be like, hi, I am so, so, so. So that's the same thing with a CV. It's the first thing that someone looks at when they look at your CV. So make sure that your name is nice and bold as how I've put it. Next section. So this is coming to the personal part. How are they going to contact you? So this is a section where you put your address, your phone number, your email address. And if you've got LinkedIn as well, that's a way of reaching you. So you could put your LinkedIn on there. As you all know, LinkedIn is basically the Facebook of the work world. Like literally that's where you put your qualifications, jobs that you've worked and you make posts about work life. So this is a fantastic way to stay connected. And also it's a way to check out your the, um, the company that's literally trying to employ you. So at the end of the day, it's really, really good to have LinkedIn. If you don't already have it, it's nice to sign up for it. And it's nice to put it on your CV as well so they can put a face to the person that is actually applying for the role. And they can actually have a little bit of insight about you. So it's really, really important. Not saying that it's compulsory, but it's nice to have your LinkedIn on your CV. Okay, so next section. So basically the CV that I'm using is my own CV. Because I thought that it was a nice way to break it down to you guys so you guys can literally get um, an insight on how to write a CV. Next section is your personal profile. This is very important and it's sometimes one of the hardest things to write on a CV. Because let's just be honest, when we're going to write something about ourselves and when we're going to hype ourselves up, it's literally so hard. It's, it's literally hard to write about ourselves. So there's a trick that I use. So if you've got friends, of course you have friends. Go and ask them, what am I like as a person? How do I come across to you as a person? And this is a very key element in which you can use in your personal profile because you're actually selling yourself in this section. And that's what you need to do. As you can see in the section that I've written, I've wrote that I, I am an ambitious scientific student. That's a very powerful way to start off a CV. The reason being, because first of all, they can see that you are ambitious because you've taken the time out to literally ex expand your knowledge by going out to be a student. Not necessarily saying that you have to start it like that. You could literally say a lot of other things. You could talk about how you're adaptable, how you've gained into personal skills from other jobs that you've worked at. Literally just write about yourself. Are you organized? Have you got different skills? Do you speak different languages? What Did you do any studies? Did you go to university? Did you do A-levels? Like, these are very crucial things in which you could put in your personal profile. That is the reason why it's called a personal profile, because you're profiling yourself. So put your skills in there. Put what you aspire to do, because, come on, at the end of the day, you're telling them about you and how amazing you are for that specific role. So why not sell yourself? So that's literally what that section is for. So you can literally get insights from family, get insights from friends, because who else know you more than your family and your friends? Nice. Do you have different skills? Are you musical? What do you find as fun? Are you adaptable? Have you got interpersonal skills? Do you like to communicate? All these things, you could place them in there. What you need to know is how you're gonna word it. Once you know how to word it, then it's fine. Make sure that you sell yourself in a way that is quite appealing and it's quite easy to read. So you don't have to write a long page. Please don't do that. Don't write a long page of a personal profile. Just like write maybe a paragraph or two. 
writing about yourself so they can literally see because more times recruit recruiters do read it but they skim through it so make sure that it's something interesting that grabs their attention that's what you're trying to do with your cv you know like when you go and do your hair let's say the ladies you do your makeup let's say that man you go and sort out your hair or whatever you're literally trying to make a first impression so that's exactly what you're doing in your cv you're literally making your first expression with words and you're trying to show how an amazing person you are because you are amazing so that's what you're trying to sell on your personal profile after my personal profile i did put my key achievements the reason why i did this because this cv i've only literally changed my employment history on it so i've only changed my employment history on the cv so my key achievement my apologies i've still got emails because i'm still at work well kind of at work so after my personal profile i put my key achievement this is not a compulsory section i just put that in because obviously my key achievement was something that i was very proud of so um i included it but you don't need to include that section you can literally just go straight to your employment history that's not a problem i just put key achievement because sometimes i'm a bit extra if you want to you can but it's not compulsory as i've stated okay so next section this is the meatiest part of your cv this is the part of where you tell them about your history your work history if you've got any if you don't have any work history you can always mention voluntary work that you've possibly done or experiences that you've gained from education in which you can apply to this section because i i'm aware that not everybody has got work experience but if you do have work experience you will first need to start with the most recent job that you've done so what you're currently doing let's say that the last job that you had so that's what you're going to be putting on your cv make sure i know this is very hard but make sure there's no gaps because if there's gaps then it will be questionable and a recruiter will literally ring you and ask you why were there gaps in this aspect of your cv so let's go back to your employment history so with your employment history as i said your most recent role but when you're going to put this in your cv make sure that you put a heading because in each section you have to make sure that you break it down so it's more easy to read if you put everything together that's a first that's a bad ad first impression the reason being because it goes to show that you're not organized do you get what i'm coming that the cv literally sells you so make sure that each section as you've looked at my cv it's got different sections have you noticed it's got different sections so make sure that there's different sections in your cv so going back to the employment history with the employment history you put your most recent employment not only do you put your most recent employment there's a way and an art in which you write the section so you're going to put what was your job title let's say that you worked as a sales assistant that title will be sales assistant but that's not the only thing that you're going to be writing in that section where did you work yes you're a sales assistant but where did you work so make sure that you put in bold next to where you've written sales assistant where you've worked so it could be ikea so sales assistant ikea you don't stop there towards the farther right make sure that you put the dates in which you've worked there so you got that so job title where you've worked and the period you've worked there let's say that you worked there from march 2021 till present you'd put march 2021 till present do you get do you get what i mean yeah so that's what you do and make sure that you go backwards so what was your job before your sales assistant at ikea oh you're working at mcdonald's okay what were you doing at mcdonald's sales assistant again no problems you put sales assistant mcdonald's and make sure that you work backwards so when did you start at mcdonald's oh you start at mcdonald's in january 2021 so if you start at mcdonald's january 21 you do january 2021 and then the recent date in which you start your new job so there's no gaps so but make sure if there is a gap please put the correct dates you know because obviously let's say that you went to travel for a year then you just make sure that oh during this period i traveled so let's say that there's a gap in your cv and the reason being 
is that you're looking for a new job during that period that's absolutely fine for that gap to be there just make sure that you explain underneath or between the between the two jobs in which you have the gap that oh i was unemployed during this period but i was looking for work that's absolutely fine so it's just giving them a history of what you've been doing so then they can apply that and they can know exactly what you've been doing over those period of time in those sections in which you've done the heading as let's go back to sales assistant um ikea what are you going to do in that section underneath you're going to put bullet points and in those bullet points you're going to claim what have you done at ikea so let's say that ikea you're a sales assistant so you're on tills you would mention your daily life where you're just on the till so you write oh um, I was working, but make sure that you just don't put I because you don't use I. You try and be more diplomatic. So conducted sales on the till, assisted customers, stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? That's how you'd break down a daily life. So maybe jot down on a piece of paper before you um, finalize your CV. Write down everything that you've done and then try and put it in a more diplomatic manner. Because remember that you're selling yourself. You're trying to sell yourself to get a role so that's what you do in those sections so your title your job the period that you've been there underneath that you explain exactly what you were doing in that role so after your employment history you put your skills and experiences that you've gained so this could include let's say that you're a computer genius and there's certain softwares like MATLAB in which you've used or let's say that you're an engineer and you use stuff like MATLAB that's something that you definitely put there as your skill or your experience because some companies they still use that software let's say that you're a scientist we use limbs so limbs would be something that you put in that section let's say that you work as an administration Microsoft packages is something that you use and I know that on majority of CVs, quite a lot of us would put Microsoft softwares there because that's what we use in the everyday life. That could be experience from university as well. So make sure that you put that down as a skill because most employers will ask for essential skills. And if that's on your CV, that's another tick. And that's another quick thing that you can literally gain. And that could actually push you above others that are actually applying for that role. So always remember to use the softwares that you use or the experiences that you've gained and pop it in there. As you can see on my CV, I've jumped down a little bit of stuff in there. Next section is education. Okay, so this could be apprenticeships. This could be university. This could be type of training or educational, as, yeah, like literally it could be anything. So it could be training, it could be education, anything at all pop that in there because it's crucial let's say that you need a specific qualification for the role that you're applying for this is the best section to put it in and it literally again pushes your cv above the pile yeah so always make sure that you put this in if for example you don't have any education or you've got other skills don't forget to pop it in the skills bit that i've mentioned prior next section after this is your reference so as you can see i put my reference there but you don't have to put your reference you could literally just put reference as requests and that's all you need to put in that section just make sure that you've sectioned each section on your cv so it can look presentable because you're trying to show that you're organized because it's a crucial skill in every single role you can't have a role about being organized because every day you have to know how to work for your task you have to know how you're going to plan out your day when you're getting delegated work you have to know how you're going to plan it out so organizational skills is very crucial and if you can literally put your cv in a sec in a way that it's easy to read it already demonstrates that you have that skill naturally so i just want to say thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and going through my cv i know that obviously i rushed through it a bit but if there's anything else that you guys want me to cover, just let me know down below in the comments and I will cover them. That's not a problem. If, for example, you want me to cover other stuff like maybe how to dress to an interview and stuff like that. Or, for example, how to answer interview questions. 
comment down below and that's something that I'll do. Thank you very much and have a fantastic evening. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.